जय हिंद लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वार्म ग्रीटिंग्स फ्रॉम एविजन सेफ्टी मैनेजमेंट सोसाइटी ऑफ इंडिया एविएशन सेफ्टी इंडिया इज हैप्पी टू शेयर ए वीडियो प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन आर वी एस एम रिड्यूस्ड वर्टिकल सेपरेशन मिनिमम RVSM is a special qualification airspace and operation in RVSM airspace demands high standards of situational awareness by the pilots it is essential that the pilots are fully knowledgeable about the various aspects of RVSM operation objective of this video presentation is to share practical knowledge about the operations in rvsm airspace let's now move on to the video presentation the reduced vertical separation minimum rvsm is the introduction of a 1000 feet vertical separation standard from flight level 290 to flight level 410 inclusive in place of the earlier 2000 feet separation introduced in 1958 in in airspace and neighboring airspace became rvsm airspace between flight level 290 and flight level 410 inclusive of flight level 290 and flight level 410 on 27th november 2003 now let's have a look at the regulated documents related to rvsm operations first is the dca car on requirements for implementation of reduced vertical separation minimum section 8 aircraft operation series s part 2 issue 1 dated 17th january 2013 i care document 9574 now we shall talk about the basic requirements for conducting rvsm operations first of all no person shall operate indian registered aircraft in airspace designated as rvsm airspace unless the operator and the operator's aircraft comply with the requirement of dgc car on rvsm the operator is authorized by dgca to perform rvsm operations the operations specifications of the operating permit are endorsed by dgca which authorizes the operator to conduct rvsm operations now we'll talk about approval requirements airspace where rvsm is applied is to be considered special qualification airspace both the individual aircraft and the specific aircraft type or types that the operator intend to use will need to be approved by dgca before the operator conducts flights in rvsm airspace now we'll talk about minimum equipment required for rvsm operations first of all we require two independent altimeters with the cross coupled static source and ice protection equipment for measuring static pressure converting it to pressure altitude and displaying the pressure altitude to the flight 
crew. Equipment for providing a digitally encoded signal corresponding to the displayed pressure altitude. Signals reference to a pilot selected altitude for automatic control and alerting. <clears throat> One transponder, an airborne collision avoidance system two, to improve the safety level of flights operating within RVSM airspace. An altitude alerting system that alerts the crew orally and visually if the displayed altitude deviates from the selected altitude by more than plus minus 200 feet. An autopilot capable of controlling altitude within a tolerance band of plus minus 15 meters at a plus minus 50 feet. Now we'll talk about altitude keeping errors. Total vertical error, maximum 300 feet. Altimetry system error, 245 feet. Assigned altitude deviation, 300 feet. Now we'll discuss the important part of RVSO operation, that is flight planning. First of all, the pilot to file the letter W to show RVSM authority in the flight plan and the letter Q in the case of RPL, repetitive plan. Pilots should verify that the airframe is approved for RVSM operations. This must verify that the aircraft is RVSM compliant and check the forecast and reported weather conditions on the route. Check minimum equipment list requirements. Check RVSM operating limitations. Then procedures pre-flight at the aircraft for each flight. Pilots to review technical logs and forms to determine the condition of equipment required for a flight in the RVSM airspace. Ensure that maintenance action has been taken to correct defects to required equipment. During the external inspection of the aircraft, particular attention to be paid to the condition of static sources and the fuselage skin near each static source. Now action before takeoff. Pilots to set the QNH and check the altimeter display a known altitude within the limits specified in the aircraft operating manuals. Both the primary altimeters should agree within limits specified by the aircraft operating manual. The maximum limit is 75 feet. Before takeoff, pilots to ensure that the equipment required for flight in RVSM airspace is operative. Now we shall discuss procedures prior to RVSM airspace entry. Now, before entering RVSM airspace, the following equipment should be operating normally at entry into RVSM airspace. Two primary altimeters, one autopilot, and one altitude alerting device. Now we shall discuss in-flight procedures. During the flight, pilots are to comply with any aircraft operating restrictions 
like indicated max number and weight given in the RVSM airworthiness approval. Pilots are to change over to QNE when passing the transition altitude and must recheck for a proper altimeter setting when reaching the initial cleared flight level. Pilots must pay particular attention to ensure that the ATG clearances are fully understood and followed. And the pilots must fly at the cleared flight level. The aircraft is not to intensely depart from cleared flight level without a positive clearance from ATC unless the crew are conducting contingency or emergency maneuvers. When changing levels, pilots must ensure that the aircraft does not overshoot or undershoot the cleared flight level by more than 150 feet. Generally, rate of climb or descent should be between 1,000 feet to 1,500 feet. Pilots must check the autopilot is operative and is engaged during the level cruise, except when there is a need to retrim the aircraft or turbulence requires disengagement. Adherence to cruise altitude is to be done by reference to one of the two primary altimeters. Pilots to confirm that the altitude alerting system is operative. Pilots to cross check between the primary altimeters every hour. A minimum of two should agree within plus minus 200 feet. Failure to meet this condition will require that the altimetry system be reported as defective and notified to ATC. During flight, a normal scan of flight deck instruments is to be carried out. Before entering RVSM airspace, the initial altimeter for check of primary and standby altimeters is to be recorded. Now we shall discuss contingency procedures after entering RVSM airspace. The pilots are to notify ATC of any contingencies like equipment failures and weather, which affects the ability to maintain the clear flight level. Equipment failure to be notified to ATCR, failure of autopilot, loss of redundancy of altimetry systems, loss of thrust on an engine necessitating descent, any other equipment failure affecting the ability to maintain cleared flight level. The pilot should notify ATC when encountering greater than moderate turbulence. If pilots are unable to notify ATC and obtain an ATC clearance prior to deviating from the assigned cleared flight level, the pilot should follow the established contingency procedures and obtain ATC clearance as soon as possible. Now we shall talk about action post-flight. Post-flight, the pilots are to complete maintenance documents, report altitude, maintaining capability, transponder failure, failures, altitude indications, difference greater than 
200 feet. Proper logbook entry to be made if there are any problem associated with flight keeping performance of the aircraft. The pilots should give the actual defect and the crew action taken to try to isolate and rectify the fault. Pilots to record the following information primary and standby altimeter readings. Altitude select a setting, subscale setting on the altimeter, autopilot used to control the airplane, and any differences when the alternate system was selected. Differences in altimeter readings if alternate static ports are selected. Use of a data computer selector for fault diagnosis procedure. Now we shall talk about pilot training, some special emphasis points. The pilots must go through the aeronautical information publication and notem pertaining to the route. Pilots should have knowledge and understanding of standard ATC physiology used in each area of operations. It is essential that the pilots cross check to ensure that ATC clearances are promptly and correctly complied with. Pilots should know the use and limitation in terms of the accuracy of Stand by altimeters in contingencies. Pilots should review the application of secondary static error correction, sorry, static source error correction, oblique position error correction through the use of correction cards available on the flight deck. Pilot should be aware of the problem associated with the visual perception of other aircraft during darkness when encountering local phenomena such as northern lights for opposite and same direction traffic and during turns. Characteristics of aircraft altitude capture systems that may lead to overshoots. Any airframe operating restrictions, if required for the specific aircraft group related to RVSM airworthiness approval. Relationship between the aircraft's altimetry, automatic altitude control, and transponder system in normal and abnormal conditions must be understood by the pilots. Now we shall talk about height monitoring units. Height monitoring unit is a ground-based system installed along the ATS routes and all the aircraft flying within the coverage of the HMU can be monitored by the height monitoring unit. The height monitoring unit captures mode C or mode S signals within its coverage from aircraft, replying to interrogation from radar stations, and determines the geometric height and position of an aircraft. Next is the GPS monitoring unit. GPS monitoring unit is a carry on system that records data directly from the aircraft systems. Following the flight, the data can be processed with GPS differential corrections and meteorological data to determine the AC characteristics. 
the main advantage of the GMU is that it can be used anywhere providing GPS differential corrections. The disadvantage is that as the operation requires a skilled operative on the flight, the cost is relatively high and only one monitoring result is produced at a time. Now we shall discuss various defenses while operating in RVSM airspace. Most important is the pilot's situation awareness of the location and intent of other aircraft gained from listening to radio traffic, visual identification monitoring, standard operating procedures for pilots and air traffic controllers, and strict adherence by them, and monitoring of airborne collision avoidance system. Ground-based equipment is then to verify that the current clearances provide adequate separation. Ground-based equipment is then to warn of potential conflict between aircraft in flight. Now we shall have a look at the air traffic control officers induced situations. Remember ATC controllers also can make mistakes. First of all, the flight clearances given by the ATC does not provide adequate separation from other aircraft. Maybe the controller is aware but makes a misjudgment. It is also possible that the controller is, controller is unaware. A trainee controller is being monitored, mentored, and the mentor fails to intervene appropriately when the trainee allows a potentially hazardous situation to develop. Then it may be due to the failure in the sector or unit coordination. It is also possible that the controller fails to see the conflict due to the blind spot effect. Now we shall discuss pilot induced situations. Now flight in controlled airspace deviates from clear track or level without clearance due to flight crew, missetting of aircraft equipment, mismanagement of FMS inputs, failure to follow ATC clearance, not flying instructed or expected speeds or rates of climb and descent, which are the basis of a controller's flight sequence management and inattention to equipment malfunction. Avoiding a perceived visual loss of separation with another aircraft. Avoiding whether perceived as potentially hazardous when unable to make timely contact with ATC on a busy frequency. Ineffective visual lookout when operating VFR. Allowing the aircraft to enter controlled airspace without ATC clearance. Flight outside controlled airspace and failure to follow on ATC clearance. Now we shall discuss RVSM related phraseology. The ATC asks the pilot, confirm RVSM approved. The pilot response should be, affirm RVSM. If 
the pilot is not RVF symbol proof, then he must communicate negative RVSM. Pilots of state aircraft responding that the flight is not RVSM approved will call negative RVSM state aircraft. ATC refuses to issue a clearance into RVSM airspace. Then ATC will inform the pilot Unable clearance into RVSM space, maintain or descend to or climb to so and so flight level. Pilot reporting severe turbulence, oblique weather conditions affecting the ability to maintain RVSM height keeping requirements will transmit unable RVSM due turbulence. Pilot reporting equipment degradation below RVSM requirements will transmit unable RVSM due equipment. ATC requesting the pilot to report when able to resume RVSM will transmit report able to resume RVSM. Pilot ready to resume RVSM. After equipment oblique weather contingency will transmit ready to resume RVSM. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your precious time to go through this video presentation on RVSM. Pilots must plan and prepare thoroughly before conducting operations in RVSM airspace. The need to have good knowledge about operation in RVSM airspace is quite important and pilots must remain situationally aware at all times by remaining alert and vigilant. Hope you found the video presentation interesting and useful. Please do share with your friends and colleagues. Wishing you all a very happy and safe flying and many many happy landings. Jai Hind.